Hi, this is the first of a series of videos and blogs where we'll be building our web portfolio with Python and deploying it for free. So this will be the final result of today's video. You can also find the blog of this video in the description and also you can find the code in GitHub. So you can check these links in the description. I will also leave the link of my last video where I already explained the introduction of Streamlit and the basis of it. So you can check it if you are new into Streamlit or you simply want to refresh some concepts. So it's nice to have a curriculum vitae, a LinkedIn profile or also some papers published, but it's even nicer to have a web publication of them where people can interact with your knowledge and you can demonstrate what you know, not only by showing images of it, but by exposing your models and your experience into web applications where users can interact with them. So in this initial video, we'll be creating the home of our site. So we won't put as much programming experience and machine learning into practice. It will be mainly Python, but we will be making use of some Markdown, HTML and CSS. But don't worry if you don't know much about them. You can copy my template and add it to your information. You can also put more or less information depending on your needs or your likes. So this is an example. You can add more of your experience here or put less data if you don't want to share as much of it. We will also add here a download button to download your curriculum if you want to add it here and also our social media links. So you can see that, for example, they work here. And also this animation of the profile image that is so original. So for this video, I will be using Windows 11, but it's also okay to use Windows 10 or any Linux distribution like Debian or Ubuntu, or you can also use Mac OS. Then the other prerequisite is to have Python installed. So I will be using the 3.11 version. It's also okay to have the 3.9 or 3.10. Uh, I recommend you the last one, but from 3.9 upwards, it will work as well. You will need also to have Git installed in your computer. If you are in Windows, you can search in Google, download Git and you can download it from there and also you will need to understand the basic use of the terminal i will be using the windows powershell uh, you can use that one if you are in windows or also you can use the linux terminal or the mac os terminal okay so let's go with the setup for the project so i created this folder up here for our project so you can use a similar name for yours if you want and now we have to create our virtual environment first of all so we open the terminal we can use the VS Code terminal and we have to create our virtual environment like this. And now that we have our BMB here, we can activate it using this command in Windows. In Linux and Mac OS, it's source space benth bin activate. Now that we have our virtual environment activated, we can create the gitignore file and we have to add these three files of here. Now that we have our gitignore file, we can create our git repository. So we create it like this, git init. And we have our Git a repository created with the main branch called main, not master. OK, so let's create our initial commit. We'll be adding, first of all, our files into staging, then doing commit, initial commit as the message. And now we can create a dev branch because we'll be using two branches for this project, the dev of development, where we'll be developing our last changes and we'll be testing that they work. And then we'll have our main branch that will be running into production. So everything that will be pushing into GitHub in the main branch, it will be automatically applied on the website that is running on the internet. So if we use our dev branch for development and testing, we won't break the main application. So we'll be creating our dev branch like this git branch dev. Now let's go to this new branch. So now, as you can see here, we are in the dev branch. You can check our branches doing git branch and you see the name of our two branches. And this asterisk of here is marking the one that we are currently in. OK, so now we can close our terminal and we'll be creating the asset folder. Here we'll be storing our images, our files like our curriculum vitae file. So those are the two files that I will be copying into our assets folder. My profile picture, make sure that it's in a square size so it's not rectangular. And also my curriculum vitae, uh, I don't have it now updated. So I downloaded my LinkedIn profile in a PDF format. I will be using that one. So feel free to use the LinkedIn one or your custom curriculum vitae. OK, let's copy those two files into the assets folder. And now we have them here. OK, so the next step will be creating the styles folder. Uh, this is optional, but we'll be using some styles in our Streamlit application to override the default CSS styles of Streamlit. So then we can create a more personalized application with different background colors, different fonts and other kinds of style. OK, so we have to create here in the styles folder the main CSS file. 
And here we'll be adding some custom CSS commands. So if you know about CSS, feel free to understand and change them. Otherwise, you can simply copy them and just leave it as they are. Also here, as we are working with CSS, it's a recommendation to use two spaces instead of four for indentation. So we'll be changing this parameter here in, in then using spaces and two. Okay, now here we are changing the default font of Streamlit. I'm using this Inter one. You can find it for free in Google APIs, but there are many other ones and maybe you prefer to change it for some other. Then here we have some general styles for the titles, uh, subtitles. These are some classes that I created, you will see, with HTML. So we are putting here some margins, some colors of the text. Also, we are changing here the styles for the social icons that I created. Okay, the following commands are in order to animate our profile image. These are even more complex, so don't worry if you don't understand them. They are some CSS animations. You can find this code again in the GitHub, so just copy it and paste it in your project. We are preparing this first because then when we are starting to create our Streamlit homepage, everything will be properly displayed from the beginning. If we have our styles already set from the start. So this was our profile image animation. And finally, we have these other parameters here that allow us to delete some of the default components that come in Streamlit, like a small top bar that is in top of every page of Streamlit. Also, the main menu, that is the burger menu in the top right of the website. Also, you can delete the made with Streamlit message in the bottom of the page, but I have it commented here because I want to leave it. Then everyone knows what technology I'm using to build this website. Okay, now we have our styles here in the main CSS, but we will also add some other styles in another way. So we'll create here another folder called dot streamlit. Here we'll have a config file that the streamlit will be looking at called config.toml. And here we can pass many different options that Streamlit allows us to change. But for now, we'll be only using some styles ones. OK, so that's uh, the config tumble for now. There are other options related to ports and other advanced things like caching and so. You can check in the documentation of Streamlit. OK, so we can close now these files of here. And before starting to code our home page in Python in Streamlit, we need one step more that it's installing our Python libraries. So we need with pip, but make sure that you have your virtual environment activated. I don't have it now, as I don't have here the message of virtual environment. So I need to activate it. Now I see here that I have activated, so I now can install the pip libraries that I will be using. And we can do pip install Streamlit. This will be the main one for today. Okay, it can take some time and it's also installing other libraries, not only Streamlit. It's also installing a lot more libraries that you can see here. I will also update the pip library as it says here. So I can do it with this command of here. This is optional as well. And now the next step will be to create the requirements.txt file. So this file contains all the dependencies, the Python libraries that your project requires. So then if anyone downloads your project or in the cloud, the container wants to install your project, it will know which libraries it has to install and which versions uh, looking at this requirements txt file we can do this doing pip freeze this will print your libraries you can see them here the libraries that we have in our virtual environment so in order to put them in the requirements txt file we have to do it like this pip freeze and pass it to requirements txt now we have here the requirements txt file Okay, and with the versions of it. So in your computer, maybe you have a little bit different versions, especially, or maybe even some more or few libraries. It should look very similar to this one, but uh, from time to time, they add more libraries to the Streamlit default version. So it can vary a little, but more or less, it should look like this. Okay, when we create more projects and we add more libraries, this requirements.txt file will be updated with more and more libraries. But for today, those will be the ones that we will be using. So now we can close the terminal, also this file of here. And finally, we can create our home file. So I will be calling it home.py. This will be the entry point for our application as well. And here we have to start by calling the libraries that we'll be using for this page. And it's basically Streamlit and base64 to decode our profile image and encode it in our HTML code. There are other ways to do it, but I'm doing it with this library up here. Then we'll start coding the website, the main page of our website, and we'll be doing it inside a function that I will be calling it home. 
and at the end I will be calling this function with these commands of here so only if we are running the home page I want to call this function otherwise if we are importing this home.py file into some other file this command of here won't run only will import these functions but this won't be called this convenient sometimes it's a good practice especially if you want to create some python libraries to be used in other scripts or for other people okay so now we'll start by doing simply st write hello world to check that everything is running I'm saving it and now in the terminal again we have to check that the virtual environment is activated as it is now and in order to see that at least this very basic page of here is working we have to do streamlit run home.py this will be also how we'll be testing locally in our computer our website every time that we add more features or we add some change now we run this and a tab of your browser has to open with your application otherwise you can open one manually and put the local host with this port of here and you will see your website so as you can see we have here the hello world message that we write here so everything seems to be working so for now we are yet not seeing the css styles applied because we are not calling this main css file it's only here but it's not imported somehow or called into our home.py streamlit file and also we don't see the streamlit config.toml styles because sometimes the browser is caching these configurations so if you want to see them sometimes you have to open the incognito browser and then it's not caching it and you see now that the main css styles are not applied but we can see the background color that it's already changing so to visualize this dot streamlit config toml styles sometimes you have to do it with the browser into incognito mode okay so i will be leaving here the incognito browser to see the changes that we apply so now if we do some change for example hello world how are you and we save it this message will appear here if we click always rerun we'll see here our update okay so let's delete this for now and let's start building our website so the first step will be to put here the page config so this will be this tab of here the fab icon and the name of it they will be declared with these parameters of here now if i save it you can see that it changed so we don't have now the message but we can see here the icon and the title of the tab the next step will be to import the main css file that we have here and i will close this so we open the file passing the path of it here and then we are reading the file and we are injecting it in html code so here with markdown we are using html code and with this parameter of here it allows extremely to use it as html so it's a little bit complicated but in two lines of here we are basically inputting so injecting the css code that we made before into our streamlit application now here we are also calling our profile square image that we had in the assets folder and we are opening the file and encoding and decoding it in base 64 so in this way we can input it in our html code and finally we are also opening our cb pdf file so in the assets folder this is the path of the cb pdf that we copied into that folder and then we are reading it so we have it ready for whenever we have to put it into the download button if any user wants to download it it will be available from this variable of here okay so this was the files extraction and the configuration of the website then let's start with the title of the website so here i'm using again some html tags here into markdown to personalize it a little bit better we can do it also with st title but in this way creating this class title we can personalize as we have seen here with these commands of here for example we will be centering this text of here otherwise it will be aligned to the left and we can change the font size weight color and margin and any other css style could be applied here so now let's save this and let's visualize it here you can see that our title is in this light green color that i chosen and also it's centered you can choose any other style or color of course and let's go to the next step and now we are putting here the profile image so let's start with the basic way of doing it i will be leaving here this option if you prefer this one so again you can copy it so this is the normal rounded image i will leave this code here if you want to use it if you prefer this one you can change here the rounding so we are rounding the image with this css tag of here and we are putting some margins to have it properly spaced also here you can see the size of the image you can change it with these two parameters of here 
but I will be commenting this one for now. I will be using this one of here that it's even more complex. I'm creating a lot of divs to have different classes to do the following. If I save it, now you see this animation. So this is created with all of these divs that are creating some classes that then in the main CSS create this animation. Again, don't worry, this is quite advanced, but if you copy and paste it, you will have this in your front page. Okay, short break from the future. I forgot to add this subtitle of here. So I'm adding it with this ST right in Markdown. I'm adding this in also in HTML. I'm adding here this subtitle with my current title or my definition, let's say, machine learning and software engineer. So you can add here whatever is your role or your definition to simplify your profile in this line of here. I forgot to add it, so let's continue with the video. Next step will be creating the social icons. So here I will be declaring the information of them. So I have here a dictionary that is called social icons data, and this is flexible because I've been putting here my main social media platforms like Kaggle, LinkedIn, GitHub, Twitter, YouTube, and Medium. But you want to add some other like TikTok or some other platforms, or you want to delete some of those because you don't have a profile into those platforms, you can simply add or delete any line here. And you have to put here the tag of the platform, then your link to your profile into every one of those platforms. So this is your personal link. And then you have to add the icon image of every one of those. You can find any icon in Google. There are some specialized CDN websites that are sharing these icons. So you can find them in Google, but you have to paste here the URL of every one of those icons. So we'll be using this information of here, this data to create HTML tags to put these icons. Again, this is a little bit complex for today, but just copy and paste it. So let's save it and let's see how it looks like we'll need to reload the website and you can see now the icons here. This is great because in Streamlit, it's almost impossible to do it by default with the default components of Streamlit to have these kind of icons here. And if you click into any of those icons, you will see that they send you into the link that we put here, the link of the profile. So adapt this to your social media. And here we have my YouTube profile, for example. So they are working. It's a little bit complex, but we are personalizing so much our Streamlit application. So it will be more original and better looking than the average ones that everyone can do with the default theme of Streamlit. Okay, so now we have these three components already. Let's add another section and we'll be adding here this markdown H2 title, but blank without anything in order to have a blank space in between our social icons and our next section. And here I am declaring the about me section. So let's save it and let's see how it looks like. Okay, so here we have my information and we are leaving here some space, otherwise it will be too much closed. Here we are not using that much HTML tags. We are using a normal markdown list. And then we are styling it in main CSS to delete these points of here, for example, or to leave some custom separation and some other personal styles. You can see here that in Markdown, in this case, I'm putting here, for example, my company link. So you can personalize this to your own company or your own links for your email, for example, or your platform. The next step will be adding the download CV button here. It's simply like this, using the normal Streamly download button component, putting here the label, the PDF bytes. If you remember, this is the file that we extracted here from our CV PDF that we read here. So this variable of here is the one that we are sending into this button. And it's the file that the user is downloading if they click into this button. And then the name of the file that will be downloading, I put the same name that I already had and the file type. So let's save it and let's reload it and we have here the download my cv button if we click into it you will see that it's downloading the pdf file and you will see it in your download folder for example so more or less we already have most of our application now the last step will be to add here a final message i will be adding here to check my projects into the navigation menu but this is not yet implemented so i put here coming soon because in the next videos we'll be adding here a left menu and a list of our projects one by one and we will be implementing them but let's leave this message for now in preparation of what's coming in the next videos okay so we have our home page finished for today so this will be the one that will be deploying into Streamlit cloud for free so now let's stop this server of here let's close some tabs let's add a new one for the terminal and now we have to add these changes into the dev branch so let's do a git add git commit 
and let's add this message here in the commit and now that we know that this is working because we tested here manually at least but we know that it's not crashing the application at least into our computer so let's merge these changes to the main branch so we first have to go to the main branch like this hit checkout main now we are in the main branch so we can do git merge dev so now we are bringing all the changes to the main branch and now both have the same code Okay, so now the next step will be going to the github.com website and you have to create an account if you don't have any. And whenever you are logged in, you have to go here and create a new repository. So we'll be creating the repository with the same name that we created our project here. So mine was Enrique D. Street Portfolio. Here we can add a description for the project. I will be putting this message of here, for example, but you can put your own description, of course. And we'll be leaving everything else as it is. We have to create also the readme file, so we can create it here for now. And also you can add later a license and other files, but I won't touch anything of here. So let's create this repository. For now, I will leave the readme with a simple message, but I will complete it later. Okay, now here we have the instructions to push this repository of here, this existing repository into this remote repository. So for our case is these commands of here. Also, it's a good option to configure the SSH keys into your GitHub account. So you have to create them into your computer if you don't have them yet. And then you have to put them into your GitHub account in the configurations. You can check this how it's done in Google. Otherwise, you can use the GitHub application into your your desktop or also the HTTPS option. We'll be using the SSH option and I will be copying this command of here. So let's put this command here. Okay, then this one and the last one. I have to put the key here. And now we already have our repository online. So you can check it here. I'm also missing the readme file because I didn't save it and push it. So it's a good opportunity to see how changes are applied and pushed into GitHub. So let's git add all, but it will be adding only the readme file and git commit adding the readme file. And then if we do git push, we will see it now here. If we refresh this page, we see now our readme file here. Okay, now that we have online our public GitHub repository, we need to go to streamlit.io and then create an account if you don't have any. So sign up if you didn't do it before, but I will be signing in. You can do it with Google as well, but it's important that you at least do it with GitHub. So you can do it with both and link the both accounts, but I recommend you to start signing up in Streamlit using the GitHub account. Then we'll go here into the new app and we'll be telling it's quite simple. You will see it's so easy to do the automatic deployment of applications. You have to choose here the repository. So for us now it's this into my GitHub account slash Enrique the Streamlit portfolio. This is how we call it. Then the branch. So this is very important because every change that is pushed into this main branch, it will be automatically deployed into this website. And we have also to tell here who is the main page file called. So for us, it's home.py. This is the entry point for our repository. Here we have other advanced settings, like they allow us to choose the Python version. I will be using the 3.11 as it's the newest one, but you can use the one that you are using into your computer. And here in other videos, we'll be using some APIs and some databases. So you can put here your secrets, your password for your databases and so, but it's very important to not share these parameters if you put them. Uh, for now, we don't have any. These are only the demonstration ones. Okay, let's save this and let's deploy our website. It can take some seconds to deploy. And here you will see this message, it is starting. So if you are logged into your account and your account has some application deployed, you will see here a button that it's not normally seen. And here you will see the internal logs of the terminal that is deploying this into a container. So this is only seen by the account admins that are logged into the Streamlit website, not by all the users. So if your app crashes into deployment, you can see here the error message that it has because sometimes, especially if you are developing in Windows and deploying this into this Linux server, some problems can occur like now, for example, let's see what's failing that it was not failing into our computer. Okay, so I found what was the error. So it was related with the name of this file of here. This CV was in lowercase and in reality is in capital letters. So Windows was taking it, but Linux was more picky and was getting an error here. Okay, now that I knew the error, I commented this part of here to make this website run. And we don't have the button here, but now I uncommented it and fixed the error. So now we can save this last change and 
we'll see how we can fix bugs into production. So this is a project that we are running only by ourselves, but the proper way of doing this is to create another cloud environment for our dev application, so for our dev branch, and deploying the dev changes into that dev environment. And only after testing that that also works into this Linux container, we can then push these changes into the main branch. For now, we are doing it like this, but just for you to know that in the following videos, we'll be creating this dev environment as well. So let's do the commit and let's push this into production. Okay, and now we'll see here the stream terminal of our application. It's taking the last changes and rerunning the container. It's probably using already many of the steps that didn't change. So many of the Python libraries, it's using Docker to not rerun everything, only the need parts. And now if we refresh this website, you can see that this is already online. Now we have everything working and also our download my CV button working. Let's check it. And we have here again our PDF file. So it's working from the internet. Now let's see how we can customize better this link of here. When using this free Streamlit Cloud service, we'll be always having this streamlit.app domain name, but we can personalize the subdomain from here to here. So let's see how to do this. We have to go again into our panel here into your apps. If we go here, we can configure these things here into our application, into the configs of it. We can go and click here into settings. And here you will see that we can change here the name of the application. So we could call it the same way as we had in our GitHub and our project, but you can try to use a shorter name. It's available, so I will be using this one, enrickd.streamlit.app. So you can look for shorter names, so then it's easier to share this link to everyone. And it's also easier to remember, so try to use shorter names with your username. Let's save this and now let's check it again. If we open it, now we see that it's already deployed with a new name. So we are already done for today. We learned how to create our web portfolio using Streamlit, only Python, but with some HTML and CSS that right for today. But well, if you don't know much about it, you can copy and paste it and it will look so good. Then we have seen how to push this project into a GitHub, creating a new GitHub repository for it. And finally, we have seen how to deploy this for free into Streamlit Cloud with a more or less customized URL that is short and easy to remember. And it's free. The URL, the hosting of the website, everything is for free. So it's great to have this kind of application ready. In the next videos, we'll see how to implement more features and more projects into this portfolio. So we'll be adding here a menu and we'll be adding different kinds of projects like computer vision projects, data visualization. We'll be creating, for example, an application to build a chat GPT, our custom one. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and give it a like if you really liked what I'm doing here and see you in the next video. Bye bye.